Yo bros, what the hell is going on? This is CSS for Beginners Lesson 23 and today we're going to talk all about these nth child pseudo classes. That's coming right up. <laughs> Alright, so before we dive into the code, I just want to quickly go over again what children are in relation to HTML. So we've got this simple UL tag here and then four LI tags within that UL. Now we'd say that all these are children, right? They're direct descendants, they're children of the UL tag. And the way nth child works is that we can go after different children within tags. So we know this is the first child, second child, third child, and fourth child, or last child, yeah? So say we want to grab the third child. We can do that with the nth child pseudo class. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to jump into the code and go through nth child pseudo classes. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm back here in the HTML, and I've made a brand new file just for you guys. It's called lists.html. And in it, we've got this simple UL tag, and within that, about 10 or 11 li tags. Now... The first one has got a bit of a title kind of air about it, and so has this fifth or sixth one here, halfway down. So we want to grab these and style them differently. We want to make them stand out. So we can use the nth child selectors, or the nth child classes rather, to do that. Now the way it works is this. First of all, we grab all of our li tags as normal. That would be the selector, right, to get the li tags. And then we add our colon to say that a pseudo class is coming up. Now the keyword is nth hyphen child. But it doesn't stop there. Now we need to specify which children we want. And this is where it differs a little bit from other structural pseudo classes. We pass an argument or a value, if you like, to this pseudo class. And the way we do that is by passing it through to um, a set of brackets here. OK, and then we put the child, uh, sorry, the, uh, the value or the argument, as most people call it, within those brackets. So we want the first child. So we'd say nth child one. And then we want to make this bold. So font weight bold yeah and then we also want the what is it one two three four five six seventh child so we know that we can add multiple rules on one line doing the comma delimited list and we can put our second one in so li nth child seven and then that's going to grab this one and it's going to style both of these bold okay so let's just save that and make sure it's worked We'll right click this and open it in the browser. Put in Google. And there you go, guys. Item one is there and item seven is there. Unfortunately, I've not saved my list.html, so these titles haven't shown up. So we'll do that again. Show an Explorer and Google Chrome. And now that's saved, you can see these titles here. They are bold. All right, so that's what nchild does for us. We can grab any child um, within a structure and we can style that one child. So we don't need classes or IDs that make things unsemantic. We can just use the nth child selectors, which is really cool, okay? Now, there's more to it. Instead of passing these numbers through as arguments or values to the nth child, we can pass other things as well. We can get a little bit more complicated and do some really cool stuff. So I'm gonna show you a few examples of what we can do with nth child, okay? So say, for example, we want all the even, all the even ones, which is the second one here, the fourth one here, even though it says item three, it's the fourth child, uh, the sixth one, the eighth one, all the even children we want to stand in, in a particular way. We can do that. We can say li, again, nth child, and then we can say even, that's all we do, pass it through a keyword instead of a number, and then style it. And we can say, okay, we want these to be background uh, gray. Yeah. And then we can do exactly the same with the odd ones. So I can copy and paste this and put odd in here. And this time we'll use pink. This is going to be a nice manly list. All right. So we're saying we want all the even tags to be gray background and all the odd tags to have a pink background. So let's take a look at that in a browser. Open this up in Google Chrome again. All right, there we go. That is pretty cool. It's looking a bit more like a table now. So we've got this one here, which is an odd number. Don't forget that's one, two even, three odd, four even. So the coloring them in stripes according to whether they're odd or even. So we've seen where we can pass a number through and where we can pass a keyword like odd and even through. Now we can do even more. Say, for example, with our pattern, this is a pattern, yeah? We're saying all even ones and all odd ones. So that's like a really simple pattern. Now we can add, we can have a, a more complex pattern. We could say li nth 
child. And then within our brackets, we pass an argument of a formula. Now, they can get quite complex formulas, um, so I'm going to leave you guys to kind of research that on your own, but I'm going to give you a simple one, and I'm going to say 2n plus 1, okay? Now, n starts at 0, so for every number, from 0 to however many numbers you've got in your list, we use this formula. So we start at 0, and we say 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So that's targeting the first link, uh, the first tag, sorry, the first li tag. So let's just say actually color green, yeah? So we're gonna cover color all the, uh, the li tags that fit into this formula, green. So the second one is n equals one. So we do two times one, which is two, plus one is three. So we're gonna get this first one and then the third one. Then the second, the third number, sorry, the uh, yeah, the third number is two. So we do two times, 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So then the fifth tag gets started. So let's have a look at that in a browser. Open this up again in Google Chrome. All right, and there we go. These are all the green items now. And it might look like it's just the odd items. And essentially, that's what it is. But we've done it using a formula. Now we can change this formula and we can say 3n. So again, starting at 0, 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So this one will be styled green. Three times one is three, plus one is four. So the fourth tag will be styled green. Three times two is six, plus one is seven. So the seventh tag is gonna be green. So, and you know, so on. So we'll see this in a browser. Show an explorer and open with Chrome. And there we go. We're getting more complex uh, kind of formulas and you can kind of mix it up however you like. You can research these in your own time and play around with these formulas to kind of get the elements that you want to target. So you can see this is really flexible. Uh, it's quite complicated when you first start out, but stick with it, practice, and you will get there. It's a very good tool to have in your arsenal. Don't just skip over it thinking you're never going to use it because the amount of times I've used this when I've been in a bit of a quandary, when I've been looking at complex websites and I'm thinking, well, there's no classes attached to those. And I've not got access to the HTML. Uh, that's with the client. So I have to use the CSS alone. And these have kind of got me out of a hole in a lot, a lot of cases. So stick at it. Learn them. If you have any questions about them whatsoever, feel free to comment below and I'm going to answer all of those as soon as I can. Otherwise, if you enjoy these videos, please like them, uh, subscribe or share them. And I'll see you guys in the next one.